ஏ வெரி குட் ஈவினிங் ஆஸ்பிரண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் யூ டு தி ஹிந்து நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் பிராட் யூ பை சங்கர் ஐஏஎஸ் அகாடமி ஃபார் த டேட் டுவெண்ட்டி நைன்த் ஆஃப் செப்டம்பர் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டூ டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் தட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் டுடே யூ கேன் கோ த்ரூ இட் நவ் லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் அவர் டிஸ்கஷன் ஹாவ் ஏ லுக் அட் திஸ் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் திஸ் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் த சீஃப் ஆஃப் டிஃபென்ஸ் ஸ்டாஃப் வி ஷார்ட்லி கால் ஆஸ் சிடிஎஸ் திஸ் இஸ் இன் நியூஸ் பிகாஸ் லெப்டினன்ட் ஜெனரல் அனில் சௌஹான் இஸ் அப்பாயிண்டட் ஆஸ் த நெக்ஸ்ட் சிடிஎஸ் நோட் தட் ஹி ஹேட் சர்வ்ட் ஆஸ் த சீஃப் ஆஃப் ஈஸ்டர்ன் ஆர்மி கமாண்ட் See, the CDS post has been vacant since the death of the country's first CDS, General Bibin Rawat, who died in a helicopter crash in December 2021. So, this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us learn about the post of Chief of Defense Staff in detail. See, the Chief of Defense Staff or CDS is in the rank of a four-star general. See, generally the Chiefs of Army Staff, Naval Staff and the Air Staff are four-star officers. In the same way, Chief of Defence Staff is in the rank of a four-star general. The Chief of Defence Staff's salary and other allowances will be equivalent to the service chiefs. The CDS heads the Department of Military Affairs or DMA. The Department of Military Affairs was created as the fifth department within the Ministry of Defence and it will function as the Chief of Defence Staff's secretariat. Also, the CDS is the permanent chairman of the Chiefs of Staff Committee and he will perform certain functions like administering the tri-services organizations. Then the CDS act as the principal military advisor to the Union Minister of Defence on all tri services matters. Here you should note one point that the CDS will not exercise any military command. Also the CDS will not exercise any military command over the three services chiefs. This is to able the CDS to provide impartial advice to the political leadership. Further the CDS is a member of Defence Acquisition Council under the Defence Planning Committee. See the Defence Acquisition Council was constituted for overall guidance of the defense procurement and planning process then the defense planning committee was constituted as a permanent body it has been set up under the chairmanship of national security adviser to facilitate comprehensive and integrated planning for defense matters and this defense planning committee will draw a road map for defense manufacturing ecosystem and strategy to boost defense export apart from this the cds act as the military adviser to the nuclear command authority Then the CDS is also the authority to implement the 5-year defense capital acquisition plan and 2-year roll-on annual acquisition plans as a follow-up of integrated capability development plan. And the CDS will also bring reforms in the functioning of three services that is Army, Navy and Air Force. This is aimed at augmenting the combat capabilities of the armed forces and it is to be done by reducing wasteful expenditure. In addition to this, the government said the cds would come under the ambit of right to information act 2005 now talking about the significance of the post firstly it creates a synergy between armed forces and the government that is it creates better cooperation between the ministry of defense and the armed services secondly it creates joinmanship in operations this is through the permanent chairmanship of chiefs of staff committee and it is needed for the operationalization of theater command or joint command then the series act as a key functionary in the nuclear command chain that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the chief of defense staff in detail and some of the functions of the cds with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion let's take up this news article this news article reports about the historical places discovered by the archaeological survey of india it includes the buddhist caves stupas and brahmi inscriptions and also hindu temples dated back to 9th to 11th centuries and the archaeological survey of india also discovered possibly the world's largest varaha sculpture this was discovered at the bandogar tiger reserve in madhya pradesh this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us discuss about buddhism in detail See Buddhism is one of the major religions of the world that originated from the Indian subcontinent and now it has spread to large parts of Southeast Asia the origin of Buddhism is attached to the story of Siddhartha who came to be known as Buddha the traditions beliefs and practices in Buddhism are attributed to Buddha and know that it is the world's fourth largest religion after Christianity Islam and Hinduism and around 7% of the world's population embraces Buddhism now let's know about Gautam Buddha in brief He was born at Lumbini which is in present Nepal in 563 BC as Siddhartha Gautam to the mother queen Maya and father king Suddhodana he belongs to the Sakayan kingdom under Kshatriya clan then after attaining nirvana in Bodhgaya he gave his first sermon to his five companions this is at the deer park in Sarnath near Varanasi this event was called as 
தர்ம சக்கர பிரவர்த்தனா மீனிங் டேர்னிங் த வீல் ஆஃப் லா நவ் த கொஷின் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் மீன் பை நிர்வாணா இன் புத்திசம் சி அகார்டிங் டு புத்திசம் நிர்வாணா மீன்ஸ் செசேஷன் ஆஃப் டிசையர் தட் இஸ் த எண்ட் ஆஃப் சஃபரிங் சி நிர்வாணா இன் சான்ஸ்கிரிட் மீன்ஸ் த ப்ளோயிங் அவுட் Thus, it is understood as the extinguishment of the flame of personal desire and the quenching of fire of life. Now, we will see what are all the three jewels which is mean as Thrai Ratna embraced under Buddhism. First is the Buddha who is the enlightened one. Second is Dhamma which is the teachings of Buddha. And third one is Sangha which is the monastic order. See, Buddha attained Mahapari Nirvana at Kushinagar in Uttar Pradesh. This is at the age of 80 in probably 483 BC. He is said to be contemporary for major parts of his life to King Bimbisara and for last few years to Ajat Shatru of Haryanka dynasty. Buddha is known in various Buddhist texts as Tadagatta and Sakaya Muni. The predecessor of Buddha under Buddhism was Kasapa Buddha and his successor will be Maitreya. Now coming to the four major noble truths of Buddhism. See the basic tenets of Buddhism are explained through the four major noble truths. They are first one the truth of suffering which is called as Dukkha. the second one truth of the origin of suffering called as samudaya the third one the truth of the cessation of suffering called nirodha the fourth one the truth of the path to cessation of suffering called marga and it is also said in buddhism that if one get rid of desires and needs then one can be free and at peace this can be attained through following the noble eightfold path they include first one kind truthful and right speech second one honest peaceful and right action third one to find the right livelihood which does not harm any being fourth one right effort and cultivating self control fifth one right mindfulness sixth one right meditation and concentrating on the meaning of life seventh one the worth of the sincere and intelligent man is through right thoughts and finally the eighth one avoiding superstition and cultivate right understanding and according to buddha the middle path that is madhya marg or middle way describes the character of the noble eightfold path that leads to liberation also note that buddhism rejects the authenticity of vedas it also rejects the concept of existence of soul once buddha attained mahapari nirvana that is the death of the buddha at kushinagar in 483 bc there was a need to compile his teachings hence four buddhist councils were held in a span of next 500 years to collate this material into pidagas the result was writing of three major pidagas that is vinaya pidaga sutta pidaga and abhidhamma pidaga and the three were combined and called as tri pidagas all of these have been written in pali language i have displayed here the four councils along with elaborate details pause the video and just go to this here note that the fourth council in king kanishka's reign there was a split in buddhism thus two sect were born namely hinayana and mahayana buddhism in the later periods it can be found that hinayana school declined and two more new schools under buddhism were born thus the four major schools developed so far under buddhism are hinayana buddhism mahayana buddhism theravada buddhism and vajrayana buddhism to know more about four schools of buddhism kindly watch the hindu news analysis video dated november 21 2021 That's all regarding this discussion. This discussion we saw about Buddhism, then the four major noble truths of Buddhism and the eightfold paths and finally about the various schools of Buddhism. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Let's take up this news article. This news article talks about Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. We call shortly this as UPA, UAPA. This is in news because the central government has declared Popular Front of India and its front organizations as an unlawful association under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. The ban was made due to organizations subversive activities that are disturbing public order and undermining the constitutional setup of the country. Also it was found that they had close contact with global terrorist organizations such as the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria which is shortly known as ISIS. and participated in terror activities in Iraq, Syria and Afghanistan. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us discuss about Unlawful Activities Prevention Act in detail. First of all, we will see why such a legislation is crucial to India. See, the national security is every government's foremost concern. India is one of the countries that is being most affected by terrorism. So it focuses more on security laws. From the Indian Parliament attack 2001, Mumbai attack 2008, Uri attack 2016 to Pulwama attack 2019 and many more India has faced a serious threat to its integrity 
also there are a series of laws that were passed with the main objective to safeguard indian national security and national interest unlawful activities prevention act is also one such anti terror legislation and the enforcement body of this act is the national investigation agency which is india's central counter terrorism agency okay having seen the need for such an act now we will see some of the background details the upa was initially passed in 1967 under the then prime minister indira gandhi it was an upgrade on the tada that is terrorist and disruptive activities prevention act and the prevention of terrorism act due to rapid change in the technique and pattern of terrorism the upa is amended several times and the most recent amendment was made in 2019 now we shall move on to see some important provisions of the act see the act mainly deals with unlawful activities now what does unlawful activity mean unlawful activity means any action taken by any organization or an individual who intends to bring session or results into separation or which disrupts or questions the sovereignty and territorial integrity of india and according to the act if the central government is of opinion that any association is or has become an unlawful association it may by notification the official gazette declare such association to be unlawful under the act the central government may designate any organization as a terrorist organization under such conditions such as if it commits or participates in acts of terrorism or if it prepares for terrorism or if it promotes terrorism or if it is involved in terrorism and the amendment act 2019 additionally empowers the government to designate individuals as terrorists on the same grounds then the act also empowers the officers of nia of the rank of inspector and about to investigate cases and the approval of director general of nia is required for the seizure of property and if the investigation is not completed within a stipulated time frame a person can be detained for a period of 180 days and such period of 180 days can be extended further until that period his or her right to bail would not arise this is mentioned under 43d of the unlawful activities prevention act then the act defines terrorist acts to include acts committed within the scope of any of the treaties listed in the schedule of the act the treaties include the convention for the suppression of terrorist bombings 1997 and the convention against taking of hostages 1979 and international convention for suppression of acts of nuclear terrorism 2005 it was also added in the list by the 2019 amendment so these are all some of the important provisions of the act that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about unlawful activities prevention act and the important provisions in the act and the 2019 amendment with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions now look at this first question consider the following statements regarding chief of defense staff let's take a first statement chief of defense staff heads the department of military affairs here the statement is correct as we know from our discussion cds heads the department of military affairs now coming to the second statement cds does not come under the ambit of right information act here the statement is incorrect because cds also come under the ambit of right information act here note that only the secrecy of planning for national security will not be disclosed in the right information act now coming to the third statement cds is the chairman of defense planning committee here this statement is also incorrect because cds is a member of the defense planning committee but not the chairman and note that the committee is headed by national security advisor also know that the current national security advisor is ajit doval okay so here the question asks for correct statement so the answer for the question is option a one only now moving to the second question consider the following statements regarding buddhism let's take a first statement first buddhist council was held under the patronage of king ashoka here the statement is incorrect because first buddhist council was held under the patronage of king ajat shatru and know that king ashoka patroned the third buddhist council and also kindly go through the table about four councils of buddhism which i have given in the discussion this is important in the prelims perspective so don't forget kindly go through it now coming to the second statement bhumi parsha mudra symbolizes buddha summoning to earth goddess during his enlightenment under the bodhi tree the second statement is correct because bhumi parsha mudra means touching the earth thus it symbolizes buddha summoning to earth goddess during his enlightenment under the bodhi tree okay so here the question asks for incorrect statements so the answer for the question is option a one only and add on i have chosen five important mudras which is very much useful for your prelims examination we will discuss them in brief just listen to them carefully first is the dharma chakra mudra 
meaning the wheel of dharma it symbolizes the occasion when he preached to his companions the first sermon after his enlightenment in the deer park at sarnath next is the bhumi parsha or touching the earth mudra it symbolizes buddha summoned to the earth goddess during his enlightenment under the bodhi tree next comes the varada mudra which symbolizes charity compassion and boon granting and note that this is the mudra of the accomplishment of wish to devote oneself to human salvation and comes the dhyana mudra which is attributed with multiple meanings with the most important being is the identification with the mystic fire that consumes all impurities and it is also said to represent the three jewels of buddhism namely the buddha himself the good law and the sangha and finally the abhaya mudra it symbolizes production peace and the dispelling of fear so these are all some of the important mudras which is very helpful to your prelims preparation displayed here is the quiz question for you today i will post this question in a community section try to answer it with this we have come to the end of video if you like our analysis please like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel thank you